Welcome to another episode of Release Day. I'm joined today by husband and wife duo Oliver and Donka Piggott, joining me all the way from Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, thank you both for, for, for joining me today. Thanks for having us, Alex. Thanks so much, Alex. It's a real pleasure. We've been you know, following your series here uh, for the last few months, and we think you're doing such a great job. It's a real gift uh, to sit down with a music enthusiast, you know, <laughs> someone who really loves, truly enjoys music, and is interested in the process. Yeah, so oh, I, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, you saying that. I, I'd love to just start off by getting to know you guys, how you how you met, and and how music played a role in in creating, you know, and, and bringing you two together. Well, uh, I used to run an indie theater in uh, Toronto. A Sterling Theater, a co-artistic director with Sophie and Rooney. And uh, we, I, I always, it's my running joke now, like I cast my boyfriend as my love interest in several plays. <laughs> so Oliver, you know, I had this plan. <laughs> I cast him in a few plays with me. And the very first time we sang together, other than, you know, privately here and there, uh, but publicly was for this play we did uh, at my theater called Crimes of the Heart. And we played love interests in the play. And during intermission, we sang as the characters of the play to each other. And after that experience, we thought, hey, you know, people really responded to us. They, they loved this intimacy between us, the connection. This is something that could be very powerful uh, in terms of a musical duo. So I think that's when we really started to mm -hmm. think about uh, putting together an act, you know. But even the context in which we met was interesting given our aesthetic because it was a 70s party essentially, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And kind of, uh, that set the foundation. You were in a play my brother was putting on, right? Yeah, and we met and, um, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always been a theatrical capacity. Yeah, and I think that really lends itself uh, to how we uh, then went on to produce and create these music videos that were very much about storytelling and how a lot of our music really is about us as storytellers yeah. coming together and sharing this moment, so this experience, and then that union between us the masculine and feminine, the husband and wife, uh, the Serbian and the yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all of the all of the combinations, Canadian, that, just kind all of, of these kind of the folklore that we live in, the the blood memory we we share, you know, from our perspective histories, and then coming together has been really interesting. I think that's the power of a duo, a musical duo, like you bring your whole life. And then it comes together in this interesting union. Yeah. Well, you can feel that in the music. You can see it in the music videos and even in your live performances that have been able to catch virtually that there's been this connection and, and you guys have really taken that and, and you know, it, it just, it really presents itself in a lot of, and all of the art that you, you do and you put out. Thank you. I'm glad Thanks that it translates. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and yeah, I mean, we've, we've had the opportunity to, to hang out you know, a couple of years back as well. And yeah. there's always just been such a great vibe uh, to be with you guys. It's always just so very, you know, like you say, you, you've been in the 70s setting and it just feels very bohemian when hanging out with you guys. That's it's very, right. very that's chill right. and hanging out. So that's, uh, we're, mod we're modern day hippies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, so, and now when it comes to the, the name, it has a very biblical reference to it. How did you end up picking Lamb Lion out of uh, a Bible verse to, to bring these, the, the combination together? Well, that, that passage has spoken to me for a long time. There's a lot of profundity to it. I like how enigmatic the name is in terms of, you know, when it comes to masculine and feminine, obviously I'm the man and back is the woman, but in terms of a lamb and a lion, those are somewhat interchangeable and the, the idea of strength can be attributed to either of us, I, I think. 
what we're putting forward in, in the act. And vulnerability. And so you, you, you know, there's some mystery in, in that sense. And so there's all that weight behind it. I, I like I like the name for that reason. I don't think it's particularly clever. It's not the cleverest name I've personally ever come up with. Um, but it doesn't need to be clever. I think the fact that that it's appropriate is is more important. Absolutely. And that, and that union between lamb and lion is a revelation of peace. And I think when you come together in a place of love, which we do as a husband and wife, we ultimately want our music to bring healing and peace. You know, it'll come in a myriad of ways. Each story will be evoking something different. But ultimately, you know, I think our MO is to bring healing and love through our music. And like real honesty, you know, like being willing to be vulnerable in our work. Yeah. And I think, I think it lends to a little bit of that ambiguity that you talk about having in your music and that your music does represent is that you can take Lamb Line and interpret it any way that you want in almost the same way that, you know, your music and the lyrics behind it is not necessarily there for somebody to listen to and, and say, this is exactly what they're saying. You're allowing yeah your listeners to take it in and feel how they need to feel through what you've written and how you're presenting it. Yeah, that's, that's a great way to put it. You know, that's certainly our, our, our hope when we create something that it'll be digested in whatever way it needs to be, you know, yeah. for the listener, without us being too heavy handed about what does it have to mean? Right. And But then the fun part, then, when we get to the filmmaking side with the music video is that then we get to get a, maybe a little more specific with one color, you know, on the yeah. palette. Like, let's, let's explore this color of meaning through the video. Well, lyrically, that there's kind of dreamlike quality to some of the music. So, so then the possibilities are, are endless visually because it can go in really any direction. It's not literally making sense. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So let's talk about it. So you released a five song EP and leading up to that, you released a lot of them as singles and you worked with some pretty incredible producers and in some pretty incredible spaces to, to create this EP. Most notably, Mark Copley has gone on to work with Bono, The Edge, Willie Nelson, Billy Squire, Joe Walsh, and, and Lucas Rossi. You got to record in his studio how did this how did you get involved with with these people and what kind of energy did that end up bringing to your recording process well lucas uh i met um when i did canadian idol back in 2008 okay watched uh probably the best performance i had on the show he was in the audience um so and he was impressed and so we uh, then met later at his show that night at uh, East Palace. And then after that, I went down to LA. I worked with him a little more. And we just kept in touch over the years. So um, I knew I was going to Nashville. You know, his family, he and his family were in Nashville. So we reconnected. And then uh, we were staying there, basically. And, yeah. And just on the fly. We ended up going in for an audition on The Voice, which was quite a quite a story in itself. And, and yeah. so he helped us film the audition video yeah and then that ended up with, uh, on the EP so I, I want to kind of get to this question of how did it all come about and honestly right before the pandemic hit we had a few songs that we were two songs we recorded with Thomas McKay who's an amazing producer Juno nominated producer from Toronto All My Love Again and War we had those recorded but we hadn't released them yet and we we didn't quite know, should we save them for an EP? Should we release them individually? And then everything shut down. Yeah. And we had just written Only the Brave with Mark Copley in Nashville, which ended up being very prophetic. And we thought, you know what? Let's just release as we ride this wave of the pandemic. Like, let's feel it out. And literally before every release, we sat down and we were like, what's the moment right now? Okay, the first release was war, like the beginning of the pandemic. And war is a very emotional ballad, you know? And this beautiful dance piece accompanied it on the beach in quarantined Cherry Beach, you know? 
I guess there's freedom on the beach still, regardless of whether you're in quarantine. But we just, just honestly, by the end of the year, we had released these five tracks and we thought, wow, here's our EP that we thought we were going to do this whole other plan for. And then we looked back and we thought, this is it. the entire year of the pandemic is this EP. And it exactly relates to our experience of the pandemic. Uh, so it kind of evolved very organically. It, it, you know, I, it's rare that you kind of release all the singles and then the EP at the end. It's not kind of a typical route to take, but it ended up working for this time we're living in for us, you know, to, it, to release them individually and then to kind of package them as this is the experience of the year that we had this very strange year that everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think it has, it, it, it's almost like it just speaks to the year and, and the way that it's even uh, composed, you know, again, tracks one, one through five, it just, it just feels, feels right. And having released war initially. Yeah. I mean, it was, it's such a, it's such a, a big, song and it, and having known you guys it came out of nowhere for me i didn't realize that this was something that you guys would be working on and 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 putting out how did that process how did that song sort of come to your come to your come to you as it and produce itself the way that it was well well that song i had written years ago actually we oh, amazing weren't sure what context we should put it out in and you no know, just didn't feel right and uh, well, we, that song and a couple other songs, I had been reworking and reworking so much. And then and then when it became clear we were going to work with Thomas. Because we met Thomas, the, who produced that track. He used to come to a lot of the live, you know, gigs around town in Toronto. And he approached us after one of our gigs and he said, I really think your sound is just awesome and theatrical and unique. I'd love to work with you. And so we went to him and we're like, we have this song War that seems to be really touching people every time we perform it. And so we sat down with him and we just decided like, let's make War together. And he really added so much to I the production. I think we put a few songs through, right? And asked him which ones he thought were. Yeah, he, he knew we were gonna war. do two, two with Thomas. Yeah, and, and, and then we enlisted our friends to sing on the course, you know, it's such a Mm -hmm. grand chorus so powerful um and that added really a lot to the track so it was a real communal effort once we got into the recording studio and it helped that that song had been living for several years it was just alive as a live entity you know yeah. never recorded before so then when we had the chance to record it it felt like it had to be epic because epic because it lived with us for so long right and then the timing of the pandemic we thought oh this is a lot of people are feeling mm. this kind of inner war right now so here we go you and know? then also uh thomas got tony rabble out who's an amazing drummer to play on the chorus for that song and that filled in a huge blank for me because acoustically there's such a disparity between the verse and the chorus it was a kind of a mystery as to how it was going to come across in the studio, what form it was going to take, and that sort of very driving Marcy rhythm that he came up with um, really tied it together. And then we got Steve York and Katie Morley and, yeah, and Lily Mason too, right? Yeah, okay. So it was really communal, and that that interestingly that as a de debut single really speaks to kind of our community in Toronto, like what we experienced as artists in Toronto. So it's interesting that the EP begins there mm -hmm. compared to the last track, which is a cover of Dream On, Aerosmith's Dream On, filmed here in Pennsylvania. Yeah. You know, so it's like the journey is incredible. And then in between, you know, the the whole Only the Brave with, with Mark in Nashville. So it's like yeah. it really took us on a journey that we didn't even plan. That's why this release is so interesting. Yeah. It, it told us. <laughs> the EP. Yeah. Well, that's what it was going to do. So yeah, I want to talk about the music videos as as part of 
you, what you have released with your music, because I, I love everything that you guys have released with these. And it feels even with just the music video you shot for dream on, which was, you know, very, it's, you know, gorilla style with, you know, yeah. your camera, a lot of in the images as well that you've put out with these feel like they've just, again, really happened. You, you, you've just felt like they get feels right. So let's, let's capture yeah. this and, and yeah. put it out and even the artwork for dream on, but with yeah. that, like you mentioned, even with war, you know, it's, it's a amazing interpretive dance piece. And then only the brave that music video is interpretive mixed with a story. And then all of my love again is a, a story piece. And I, I love that you guys are able to bounce back and forth between the style and these ideas for visually accompanying your, your songs. And there's also, there's also such a personal touch to them as well that I think really allows your fans and your listeners to want to listen and follow you along it's not about oh these guys are asking for money again to support their their art you know it's i see i see them in these you know all of my love again especially you know if you add the little touch of your wedding at the end of the video it's just it really you know it it i think connects with an audience on another level so how have those ideas how did those ideas come to you when it came to you know understanding war needs to be interpretive only the brave can be a mix and all my love again is this combined storytelling piece is there a process in which you follow to, to get to those it, it does depend with dream on uh that that was a bit of an outlier because it wasn't really premeditated we had gone out to the edge of the cliff here which is on the edge of the property overlooking the lake and just to take some practice shots and then that was one Donka took with her phone. Obviously, the quality's grainy, you know. And, and because, uh, because terms, in the guess, moment, you call the grit the footage kind of shitty looking, right? But but and and we were we had planned to. As a matter of fact, we did reshoot with a GoPro. Um, but I said to Donka at the time, I'm like, Donka, this is it. You don't want to do any cuts, one shot. Like I had all, you know, we were working together so perfectly, and it just kind of happened. And I'm like, maybe the point of it is that it looks shitty, right? Like, like we can stand behind this, you know? So that one kind of just fell into place in that because sense. Because there was a storm coming and we are like, yeah. this, the moment is the storm. Like, yeah. I don't have time now to set for a yeah. beautiful frame and get yeah. the lighting I need. The storm is here. <laughs> like, now <laughs> yeah. is the time. So that one was yeah. very, like, clear in the moment. Yeah. However, that's a great question about the others. I think it was a combination of my history in the theater and as a director and actor in this learning about visual storytelling and teaming up with Terrace Leverin, who's a good friend of ours for of years, who we've worked with for years. Um, and then the three of us taking the song, really listening, meditating, letting images come, and then getting together for like a powwow, <laughs> the three of us. And then honestly, every time it just revealed itself. We had a powwow and we'd be like, what if this, what if this? And then it just happened that it, the ideas came very quickly mm -hmm. and we knew right away it was the right idea. Well, we all trust each other too. We know that when There's we're so conceptualizing, much first of all, he's like, oh, that's maybe not working. We trust that that would maybe be the case because of his experience and his artistry. Because he's great with yeah. the camera. And he trusts we're going to deliver when we perform um, and, and, he, and in the music. And then we know he's going to deliver with his actors that he chooses. Well, I helped choose actors because of the casting. We both shared this experience. He and I did a lot of acting together in the past. And so we have a whole network of actors and then with all my love again, those are our dearest friends in Toronto. Yeah. And that was their wedding song. And then their her parents married us. So that was an easy choice. I, you know, Terrace was like, I have some actors in mind. I was like, I don't need actors. <laughs> I have the actual people <laughs> that this story is about, you know. So, you know, we just trust the song and we trust the relationship that Oliver, myself and Terrace have as creative minds and hearts coming together. And then we just, we just let it unfold. And then that's why I think 
we don't get too caught up with like it's only narrative videos that we do right. or it's only mixed media or it's only dance it's that's our brand no our brand is evolving because we're evolving and yeah. our brand of our our storytelling depends on the moment and depends on how the song is coming to life because this next release much like our EP a lot of these songs had lived with us for many years mm. And that's not always the case. Sometimes you write a song you and you release it. Well, the, the new one's going to be the result of several years of honing it because we probably played it almost the most out of any song live. And next it's to gone war. Through, next it's to gone, war. Yeah, war but, but it's gone through more evolution through war. Um, yeah. And really, like, we've streamlined it. And we have some of the best musicians. Players in, on yeah. it. So I feel like we keep... This EP was, like, such a godsend and gift to us in terms of it told, it unfolded for us and revealed to us what kind of work we want to put out there and what's really important to us in terms of how we release. And you touched on it. We, we want to release stories that touch, stories that are personal to us and hence personal to the people that view them. Because if you allow yourself to be vulnerable in your work and it's real, it's not something put on, Mm -hmm. People respond to that and they go, oh, yeah, I get that. That's that's yeah. a little piece of my life. OK. And I think I think that also touches on what you were saying earlier, Oliver, about the Dream On video and have it being a uh, iPhone recording, but being kind of yeah. gritty, but also being real. It also relates back to you also have a, a blog online that you write about and you had written about recently was about the perfection in the studio and focusing too much on, on, you know, making sure everything sounds great and kind of losing these elements that really affect people and have people connecting with these little, you know, maybe you're out of tune for a moment, or, you know, maybe uh, there's a, you know, a, a drum hit in the background and, and you, know, you heard about these things back yeah. in the day, you know, Sting sitting on the piano at the beginning of Roxanne, leaving that in Aerosmith when it came to Sweet Emotion, breaking a rattle and leaving that in there and yeah. uh, Rolling Stones recording an album with a, in a studio without a roof. You know, it's, yeah. it's all these pieces that really do connect with audiences that I think a lot of people are, are forgetting or, or trying to focus on eliminating way too much of. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a long process for me of breaking down preconceptions. I was signed to a publishing company at quite a young age at 20 or so. I was with BMG and I, I went through that process of writing in the traditional sense and being in the studio. And, um, and I've cut a lot of music uh, for commercials and things. So that's obviously very regimented. And so uh, the concept of rhythm and the concept of melody are very strictly defined. Um, but I've come to realize that neither notes or rhythm necessarily need to be restricted to what, what they are currently in the mainstream. You know, tuning is almost arbitrarily defined. We're in 440 megahertz. But if you change that megahertz, there's infinite notes, you know, in between in the spectrum. So, you know, something can be out of tune, quote unquote, but you're just exploring those other resonances, maybe, right? Maybe that's part of the art. And then similarly with rhythm, maybe part of the, the, the piece of art is that it doesn't stay to one beat per minute. It's, it's fluctuating, it's moving, it's breathing. Maybe that's what rhythm is, you know? Maybe our ideas of rhythm and melody need to be reformed or, you know, we need to go back to maybe some previously more enlightened attitude towards it. I think, I think we've been far too long, maybe because of the digital revolution, far too long stuck in this paradigm. Beautiful. I, I love that. And I love that perspective because I, I mean, I think not that I'm singing or an artist like you guys are, but it just, it, that feels, that feels right. It feels like there's, there's too much focus on, on the perfection or thinking one, yeah. especially when it comes to art and, and music yeah. and, and rhythm. Absolutely. Well, it's just so easy to cut corners with, with the technology we have now and oh yeah, and, uh, not see something through. Maybe you do a take that's not perfect. You all just adjust this or this or that, right? I, I've technically said the words, the lines there. So now I can just manipulate it till it sounds good. Yeah. Or, or maybe, maybe you should just sing it till it sounds good. Yeah. 
that too. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, so we're just, that's the gift of this global crisis for artists, I think. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's just coming, I like how you said, coming back to a, perhaps a more enlightened way. Yeah. I think there's a whole artistic revolution that is about to, it is happening and it's, we're really going to see it unfold the next few years. I yeah. really feel that strongly. Well, and speaking about the current world that we're living in, you released a beautiful mini documentary to support your song, Only the Brave. And this focuses on people from Toronto and New York City and and talking about the the brave people in their lives. Did you guys have this in mind when you were writing the song or when the song was done? Did you think we need to do this? Or was it, again, just the nature of the world we're in that you thought, this would be a great piece to to follow with with the release of the song. It, again, it, it was one of those in the moment. The whole EP, I swear, was like that. It, it <laughs> Should find some better brave. questions for you. That's what I need. Only the break. <laughs> only the break. We wrote it a month before the lockdown. Exactly, and then it revealed itself once we got to the point of being ready to release it and filming the video and everything. We, you know, had, we were halfway through filming the video. We had the footage from Toronto, the bike ride. And then we said to Terrace, come up to the wilderness where we are and shoot us, you know, in the wilderness. And he came up and he stayed with us. And we were, we started discussing this idea of honoring brave people, like real people in some way. And initially we thought, can we add that to the current idea of the video? Mm-hmm. And we played with that for a bit, that idea. And we thought, no, no, let's just have it be a separate piece where we can really devote the time to these little vignettes of stories about great people. And then we'll just marry it with the song. And that worked through that. We was got really- a great editor for that. Too. Yeah, Sean Colvier edited it, uh, the documentary part. And he's great. And uh, he really helped kind of bring out well, they're amazing the stories. I, yeah. How did you, how did you get the stories? Where did those come from? How did you were you able to? Did you reach out to your network of people to ask? And then yeah, we reached out to our network, and a few people were recommended to us once they heard that we were doing this. And we just, you know, we were so thankful for the people that shared their stories. And there were stories that weren't included because we didn't want to make it too long. Right. Of a yeah. piece. Uh, but we were just so honored to share these stories because we realized we wrote the song right before the shutdowns. Then we realized it was a prophetic song for the times. And then we realized people were struggling and needed a reminder of what it means to be brave. And that comes in all shapes and colors and contexts. And I'm, I was really happy that we featured people from all walks of life uh, to, you know, honoring the brave people in their lives. Yeah. So yeah, it, it just, that's how it unfolded. Yeah. Yeah. You guys really just run with the, the, the rhythm of the earth and the way that things are turning for you eh? and, and just <laughs> taking, uh, taking advantage of, of, you know, what the people, you know, and the, and the situations you're in, it's, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. And just everything. Yeah, because you know what, out. in the past, maybe years ago, I remember thinking like, I have to have a specific, like exact strategy and rollout. And it needs to have this overall exact theme that is a, you know, matches this first piece and like a much more kind of regimented idea of, of a piece, like an EP or an album. And then I realized, no. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Just listen to the work and let it tell you what mm-hmm. it needs to be. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It actually tells us. <laughs> yeah. It tells us like, this is what it is. Oh, okay. Like it yeah. surprises us. We think we know what we wrote and what the song is mm-hmm. on some level. Yeah. yeah. There's always a mystery, but on some level, we're like, oh, we know what this is. And then like a year goes by, two years go by, it's time to do it. It's well, a pandemic, and it just tells us that now, okay, now and this. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was referencing with the recording process because 
digital technology, you go and you sing a, a line and maybe you make a mistake and it doesn't turn out the way you wanted it to. But maybe the way you wanted it to in your mind, <laughs> not the way yeah. it's supposed to be. Yeah. But you're too blind to it because you're already, no, I can fix it. But yeah. not realizing yeah. that what you have is incredible. Yeah. You know, exactly. I think it's imperfection that makes it interesting. Totally. I think, I think you know, in to, and to that point, it's about maybe understanding where you want to get to and how you want it to come out and, and, but being open to, to moving with how, you know, with the way that it's going to move. That's you know? exactly it, Alex. Yeah. It, Cause we definitely hear, have a very clear intention. Yeah. Our intention is crystal clear. Yeah. But in terms of how the, it unfolds and what it exactly ends up looking like, that's more malleable. So that's been a lesson too, you know, now that we're parents, we really, we really are learning how to make the most of the time we have to create. Like it's got to be, like got to have a big reach because so much of our energy goes towards our beautiful sons. And so when we do create something, we give it our all and then we disappear for a while and we go back to devoting our hearts and days to our sons and as we percolate and create something new and then we emerge release and then we disappear again and and that seems to work for us you know sometimes we're wondering like I guess we should be a little more consistent with our social media and whatnot but so far it works for us you know we create in the moment we go back to our family life then when another creation brews we re-emerge We'll get better at you being know. more consistent. Yeah, we'll you try know, to be a little more consistent. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and and that's something that I'm learning as a parent as well, is that there's going to be more time for that. You know, you guys are, are working and building what you can right now, and you're doing yeah. an incredible job of it, and you're putting out amazing music, and you're putting out content that, that does resonate with people, that people can connect with. You're doing what you can right now, and, and while being the parents of... of of twins and you know you yeah, obviously Two year old boy <laughs> twins <laughs> yeah i mean it's incredible all of gotta go you look pretty tired man you've been you've been uh, <laughs> you know uh, up, up. And i've been more awake it's true <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's uh i was just you know i was even curious about how you how you guys manage that and being able to you know even with the output and, and again maybe it's this idea that the pandemic you know it, it helped with you to focus on the recording and the music videos of it. You didn't have to so much think about touring or That's playing right. live, you know, yeah. you, you had the opportunity to do virtual shows, but yeah. you know, just how you were, you know, how were you able to, to balance the, the, the work life? I mean, I don't want to call it work. I think you guys do is what something you love. So I don't consider that work, but how are you able to, you know, balance the creative process with being parents? Grandparents. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah i hear you if if we didn't have my mom and dad and ollie's mom i don't know yeah but if, i don't know if we could have had the same output that yeah. we had this, this year i mean they're they're with your folks right now yeah it's just um i can't i always admire parents who don't have any help man like, no who kidding. don't have grandparents who don't have aunts you know brothers and sisters and some uncles whatnot to help and are trying to run a creative outlet it's it's very difficult so we've gotten just really good at asking for help when we need it but also learning to organize our time yeah. effectively you know like okay we're gonna yeah. take them outside then we're gonna feed them then they're gonna go for a nap during nap, we're making a list XYZ. of XYZ that we need to accomplish. I'm going to play with them for a bit while you mix the song. Then you're going to play with them while I have a meeting with Terrace about the music video. Yeah. You know, and we just juggle. Juggle yeah. very quickly. Lots of balls fall. <laughs> yeah. If I have a spare second, I know I'm not doing something right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like our, 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 we often joke, like, I sometimes, I'm like, wow, I haven't showered. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then Oliver's like, I haven't tied Yeah, there was one, one day when, uh, yeah. When, <laughs> well, it was in Ontario when we were up north oh, yeah. and we were away. 
and you know, and they're smaller and like, it's a little easier now actually, because they're, you know, funny enough, they're more mobile and, and it's uh, somehow easier. But at the time it's like, I couldn't keep, take my eyes off them. And I literally couldn't tie my shoe the whole day. It was just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm tied shoelace the whole day. You know, so it's like there are sacrifices, you know, to to be made, but it's so rewarding. We've never been so on fire since becoming parents. It's life altering. Everything we put out in a way is for them because we want to be an example to them. Like yeah, you no, can be yeah. an artist. It's not an easy path but you can be an artist and you can be authentic and you can share what you have to give with the world and be brave enough to do that. And that's for them. Mm. This is all for them. Whereas before it was for us. Yeah. It was like for personal. Yeah. And my bar was low <laughs> in terms <laughs> of my like aspirations. Yeah. Like we were okay to, to post the... in a sense. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. we were happy to, do we still always had a high level of you know artistic art output but, yes. but in and, terms of and in terms of what we wanted we always put out quality things uh -huh. it's not like we cut corners in terms of the quality no never in that sense but um in other ways certainly in terms of me. i guess the ambition of yeah. really putting yourself out there fully mm -hmm. like yeah. what would it look like to our sons if they see mom and dad reaching not you know somewhat of their full potential yeah. whatever that might look like we don't even know what our full potential looks like yeah. as as parents as human beings as artists what does that look like i don't know it's a journey mm -hmm. i want the, our sons to see that so we're just so grateful to them they are this ep as well they are the release strategy yeah <laughs> because it's about the balance for us and navigating this creative life and this parent life and, and doing it all in a sense so that they can have an example of what it means to live authentically in the world. Amazing. Well, I think that's a great way to end this. Thank you so much. You guys have a, a beautiful, looks like you have a beautiful surrounding uh, to, yeah, to be yeah. enjoying. It is nice. Yeah. Yeah, um, like several acres here, right? Look, overlooking Lake Erie. You know, you watched Dream On. That's the property we're on, that edge there. Yeah, that's so, amazing. It must loud. just be so great for, you know, uh, fostering creativity and that yes. kind of atmosphere um, as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we that's... really don't see ourselves in cities anymore, you know, other yeah. than popping in for something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for what the, the necessity brings. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's right. That's great. Well, Oliver, Donka, thank you so much for taking the time and, uh, you know, out of your busy lives and schedules as parents and musicians to speak with me today about your your EP and um, really looking forward to, you know, when you guys get around to making more music and releasing new visuals. It's, uh, well, it's likewise, exciting. Alex, thanks so much for having us and, and taking the time. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. And okay. it was nice to talk to like a fellow parent and creative. <laughs> so it was really a ple our pleasure to spend this hour with you.